Well, welcome to our markets picture. We were just talking about pick and pay results a little bit earlier on when we had uh, the group executive, uh, David North, taking us through those figures. But to have an analysis on what's going on in the JSC right now, we're joined by Markwe. Markwe, thank you so much for your time. What do you make of the current market activity? Yeah, good day to you and to the viewers. It's more of a muted uh, trade, especially here at home, even though European markets are up nicely. And it's a question of as much as we're getting company results, markets are still worried about the new numbers or the new infections when it comes to COVID-19, especially in the likes of India, the likes of Japan, and that gets people to be worried. And anyway, Given that the markets are at these elevated levels, valuation seems to be so high. We need all these company results to justify all these stock prices. But the issue now, as much as we've been seeing the vaccines roll out, being successful in other parts of the world, people are now starting to be worried about the new infections and the possibility that we might even get new variants that the current vaccines might not be able to deal with. What did you make of pick and pay's results? I mean, looking at the share price now, down a quarter of a percent, trading at 53 rand 84. You know, for the fact that their profits as, a, as headline earnings per share were down 21%, I, I think it's kind of understandable because remember, the guys also make significant money when it comes to liquor, and we've seen that the sales of liquor and cigarettes drop by almost 1%. But when it comes to the core grocery, food and whatever, there was a nice growth of almost 10%. And unfortunately, people don't factor in that since COVID, we've got this additional cost of doing business to make sure that you secure your workers or premium misses you know are complying so that cost as well and remember also that 200 million when it comes to the severance packages that they had to pay but going forward i think the guys have managed to restructure themselves in such a way that they'll now be able to be to compete with the lack of spa i don't think they'll be able to get anywhere near closer to the likes of Shoprite. Let's talk about ABSA because that was the news of the day yesterday when the announcement around the discussions between the relationship uh, of the board and uh, the CEO, that share price was down 4.4% yesterday in the morning. What do you make of the developments there? I mean, you have the uh, chair saying that there was a misalignment in terms of strategy and culture. What are some of the questions that are running through your mind at this particular point? I think it just confirms that what we've been complaining about when it comes to APSA, that they've never had a succession plan, starting with the likes of Maria Ramos when, he, when she left, you know, the arrangement that she just decided to tell them that end of the month I'll be leaving, but the guys didn't know who will take over. As a result, they were so desperate to get Mr. Minele. Remember, the guy had to have almost a six-month garden leave, but they were prepared to wait for him. But the questions here are, when you get involved in any institution being the CEO, you check their strategy. Are you happy with the strategy? And more importantly, do you think uh, this is the kind of... The black. Uh, this is the kind of strategy that you'll be able to pursue and what are your plans to be able to pursue that kind of strategy. So all this thing about changing the strategy, the culture, in my opinion, these are the things that could have been sorted out during the interview that you as an individual, you are happy with the direction or do you want to change it and how do you think we'll change it and how do you think or what do you recommend we do? So I don't think that should be a reason now. But anyway, we've seen what happened with Absent 2017 when we expected that Pagamani should be taking over, but unfortunately we couldn't take over as one of the head of their units, and we saw a large black of uh, professionals staging a walkout. So it's kind of disturbing that at this day and age we still complain about stuff like that. Let's talk about something fun and something that made me smile a little bit earlier on in the week. And that was the conversations around the European Super League. I mean, what did you make of the sentiments? I mean, typically we wouldn't talk sports on a markets uh, segment, but some of these, uh, you know, soccer companies or rather these um, sports houses are listed in, in Europe. Manchester United being one of them. But let's talk about this European Soccer League. You are right, even the likes of Juventus are listed and are done almost 8% because it's not going ahead. But it was very interesting that we saw JP Morgan seeing a space that this is where we can tap in. And anyway, we know that game is so rich. There's a lot of money to be made out of all that. And I think for me, it confirms that at the end of the day, 
money will always look for opportunities where it can continue to make good returns. And I think people saw that there's an opportunity, and I think they were clever to even start with those big guns, because without those big guns, your league's not going to attract the, the viewers. Your league is not even going to attract the necessary sponsors. So it was just so unfortunate that they just got pressure from your fans, from the government, from even apparently some royal family as well, put some pressure on it, and hence most of the U.S. or all of the uh, U.K. teams had to withdraw. All right, Makwe, let's leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. That is Makwe Masilela from Makwe Fund Managers talking to us about all things markets related. That's it for me here at the JSC. But I